Hi everyone, Luke here from 3D Tutor. Have you ever had an issue where you're working with multiple assets, but you're struggling to file manage every single one of them? How about just wanting to speed up your process of getting all of those assets from 3D modeling software onto Unreal Engine project? Well, if you answered yes to either one of them, then this video is for you. Within this video, I will teach you how to set up asset packs within Blender and how to export them out within one FBX file. Then we will go over some quick Unreal Engine 5 options for a multi-asset FBX file, and we will finish off the video by going over how to modify and update the said items in case you want to make some changes to them down the line. So if you're looking for a way to streamline your 3D modeling workflow and want to make your life easier, then make sure to stay tuned for this video and learn how you can do just that. So yeah, let's get started. In order to get everything out for Unreal Engine 5 in bulk, first of all, we got to make sure that we are exporting everything out properly. So for us to do that, we'll need to get ourselves all the items and right now they're all scattered around and if we were to just simply export everything out within one file, we'll essentially get all of those origin points to be centered to the origin of the world because uh, by default, Unreal Engine doesn't pick up those origin uh, points, uh, pivot points that we already set up. So it would give us uh, a bit of a chaotic type of situation in where everything would be hard to place. So for us to fix that, we firstly need to go ahead and get all of those items and make sure we set it up within the center of the world. And that's actually quite simple to do. All we got to do is just grab everything we have within the scene. Then we're going to need to make sure that the 3D cursor is going to be at the center of the world. And for that, we're going to hit Shift and S. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go over the cursor to world origin option. And this will basically reset the 3D cursor that we see at the very center, this tiny bubble over here, to be at the very center of the world origin. And afterwards, all we got to do is just click uh, Shift S again and get ourselves all the selections to the cursor. And this will make sure that everything is placed at the very center. And after we export it out, I recommend you to click Ctrl Z to make sure to undo it in case you want to move everything uh, back and readjust a couple of items. Keep in mind that this entire selection, when I'm putting it onto selection to cursor, they're all doing this operation based on its own origin points. So they're not putting the center of the mesh into the center of the into the 3D cursor. Instead, what it's doing is it's finding the location of those origin points and you got to make sure you set them up properly. So for you to do that, you'd have to, for example, if I want to select this door, you'd want the hinges to be on the side like this one over here you see this tiny orange dot this is the origin point and essentially what i ended up doing was i go to the edit mode i click free to go into the face selection i select the face itself i click shift and s to get ourselves uh, the cursor to active like so so we get our cursor over here then i go back onto the object mode by clicking tab right click go to set origin and origin to 3d cursor and that'll essentially make sure that even if I were to move my origin like so, I were to set the origin to 3D cursor, it's going to be setting it to the 3D cursor like so. So now you can see it moved a little bit downwards, which would be fine, I reckon, either way, because uh, we just want to make sure that once it's set up, we can now rotate it based on those origins like so. And usually that's what you want to do for the doors. But yeah, anyways, all of these assets are set up with its own unique origin points, as you can see over here, based on the type of an asset it is. So for example, these walls over here, they have it set in a corner and they would work pretty well in this occasion. So yeah, going back to the to what I was saying, I'm going to select the entire thing, I'm going to go on to Shift and S, selection the cursor, and that's not the way to do it. So again, I'm going to hold Shift and S, go to cursor toward origin first, then I'm going to get selection to cursor and that will position everything within the center of the world. But for starters, let's go ahead and have everything selected and I'm going to go ahead and go to file, go to export options, click FPX. And now as for the FPX options, we need to make sure that we set everything up properly. So for the operation presets, we're going to go ahead and get only the selected objects to be exported. This is only going to be a mesh. So I'm going to make sure that it's only going to be exported as only for meshes. And then one more final thing in order to make sure that we have all those edges that are smoothened out to be exported out properly we're going to have to scroll all the way down onto the geometry and there is a smoothing option which is by default set as normals only but the unreal engine detects them as a bit of a different type of information so for us to actually pick that up we're going to need to make sure that it's set as faces and essentially that'll pretty much be sorted and then once we set everything out like so 
we're going to go ahead and export it out. I'm just going to export this out to our desktop and just going to call this a uh, kitbash uh, castle like so. Going to then click export and yeah, that's it. Now, after we're done with that, after we take some time for it to finish up all the exports, since this is a lot of pieces, it'll take some time. But once it's done, we can click control Z to undo essentially this entire motion because when we want to move or modify some of those assets it's better to just keep them back in original state and then afterwards once we're happy with that we'll be able to move them back into the world origin but essentially now that we're done with, uh, with it like so we're going to go on to our project so i've got myself a nice uh, empty scene opened up and essentially with a content browser opened up if you're not seeing content browser by the way just make sure to click uh, control and space and dock this to the layout and I'm getting myself usually an empty folder just to make sure that all of those assets are going to be, once they're unwrapped, they're going to be nicely set up. So yeah, afterwards, we're just going to click and hold and then drag the entire FBX file onto our content browser, like so. Once we release, we get FBX import options. For the import options, let's make sure that we have import a mesh selected. And it's not a skeletal mesh, so I'm just going to make sure that it's ticked off which as you can see it's going to give us uh, different options but essentially if it's just a mesh just make sure that this uh, skeletal mesh is ticked off if you do have a skeletal mesh or some animation within your mesh just make sure to separate them uh, instead of keeping it as a bulk i recommend you doing that as it would work much better if uh, static mesh and skeletal meshes are separated and essentially so yeah, once we're done with that, we also got to make sure that we go on to the advanced tab over here because a lot of options are hidden here. And the most important one that we need to make sure we have ticked off is going to be combined meshes. If this is not ticked off, it's just going to give us one asset that's going to have all of those tiny assets and it's going to give us quite a bit of a mess. So let's just make sure that this is ticked off. And yeah, that's pretty much it in regards to setting it all up. We're going to click import and it's going to start importing all of the assets. After we're done exporting everything out, we're going to get something like this. This is uh, using item, so it's going to give a couple of errors for us, but that's okay. We can, uh, if it's not red error, usually it's still usable anyway, so we can click clear. And you can see at the bottom right hand corner, where it's preparing mesh cards. Essentially, it's just going to create well, all of those assets. Uh, it's going to create individual materials or it should create individual materials and any textures that it has attached but usually i would recommend you to replace it the materials and the textures uh, with just getting yourself a uh, material made uh, an entire material setup for it and you can see them already being imported and now that we drag it in because we set ourselves up with a nice position within a world origin you can see that the origin of this bucket is going to be right as where we want it to be so let's say we don't uh, like one of the objects or one of the assets and we want to replace them. Usually what you'd need to do is you'd need to set yourself up with um, quick replacement, which would be easy to do if it was a single object. All you'd have to do if it was a single object, just right click and click uh, re-import. I essentially, after you're done uh, re-exporting it out from Blender or any other 3D software. But if we were to do it like this in our project right away, what would happen essentially if we were to just simply use that? All of the assets from within our one uh, packed uh, FPX file would be placed within this single asset. So that's not what we want to do. Instead, what we want to do is essentially make sure we update all those assets separately. So the way to do it for bulk FPX files is actually going to be like essentially once we update uh, the entire selection let's just say i updated something so once i'm done uh, modifying some of uh, one of the assets i would go ahead and select them all back go back to selection to cursor which was already positioned at the world center then go to file export it out and fbx and again with the same settings i would essentially replace the kit bash castle uh, fbx and once i'd be done with that essentially what we do is we'd go back to our project and we would drag the project file, the FBX file that we saved it over again onto the scene like so, onto our already set up folder. And this would give us the original FBX import options. We're going to make sure that all of it is set up as pretty much it was. So I'm going to make sure it's not skeletal mesh. 
and it's going to have combined meshes ticked off essentially after it's done like that after it's make, we're making sure that combined meshes is not ticked on we can click import and what it'll essentially do is it's going to replace all of the assets and not only assets it'll replace the materials as well so i'd recommend you to have uh, set up uh, the materials from scratch essentially and because you'd be setting it up from scratch what you'd have to do afterwards i think you'd have to essentially replace the materials again so let's say i had an original material applied onto uh, an asset and then i'd want this our, our material to be uh, replacing the ones within our folder so i'm going to go ahead and quickly do that and let's say i'm going to double click to open up the asset to make sure it's actually replacing the asset reference itself and i'm going to go ahead and do that by just simply dragging the new material like so into the area or where the material slots are if you have more slots you'd have to replace them each individually but essentially once you'd be replacing all of those assets uh, like i just shown you by dragging it and using the fpx import i'm actually just going to do it again real quick and uh, making sure that the skeletal mesh is ticked off making sure that the combined mesh is ticked off i'm going to click import what you'll notice is once it's set, set up back onto the import i'm going to close it down and the material goes back to normal so the easiest way to um, readjust reapply the material would simply be to get on to the material that it's using so this one is being used by this one over here it's essentially the original material that we had previously and we'd want to go all the way drag it uh, until we find the material that we created essentially the new material that we created we'll want to hold uh, control select it so both of the materials the original one and the one that we made a new one is going to be selected we're then going to click uh, right click on our mouse we're going to go to asset actions and replace references with this option we can go ahead and select the one we want it to be replaced to so the selected one is just going to basically essentially replace every other asset and yeah we're just going to go ahead and select the new material that we created we're going to consolidate assets like so and essentially as you can see over here all the assets that we're using this material are also going to be uh, replacing those kind of materials so it's a quick way essentially of setting ourselves up with new materials so yeah essentially that's pretty much it in regards to the bulk edit uh, workflow Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in a bit. Happy modeling everyone.